Welcome to this episode of the next batch. Today we're going to brew up this hazy, juicy, east coast style IPA. Let me show you. This east coast style IPA needs to be hazy. Almost uh, like orange juice. Before we start tasting the beer, let's see how I brewed the beer. Today is the day before brew day and I'm preparing my brew day tomorrow. I'm going to weigh up my malts and crush my malts. And I'm also double checking that I have all the ingredients that I need for tomorrow's brew day. This is a rough overview of what I'm going to use tomorrow. I have my the new IPA book, I have my uh, lactose, my malts, my hops and my yeast. Normally I use fresh yeast and make a yeast starter, but uh, tomorrow I'm going to use four packs of this. I have checked that I have everything I need, so I'll put my hops back into my freezer and weigh up the malts. I make all my recipes in Brewfather app, so I have the recipe on my phone. So let's do some weighing up. I have my scale here and I put my malt bucket on it. Okay, that's it. 14.2 kilos of malt. And now I'm stepping outside with my malt mill to crush the malts. I do it outside to avoid all the malt dust in my brewery. It's brew day and I have mashed overnight. I'll come back to that later. And now I'll stop the mash and start the sparge. Okay, we're finished mashing and I'll remove the mold pipe. I'll wait to start the boil. Okay, I'll slowly lift the mold pipe up. Okay, let's start the sparge. So I have my sparge water here in my old brewer. And I have my riptide pump and the mesh manifold from SS Brewtech. So to sparge, I just start the pump, open up the... <laughs> And the water gets pumped through the holes in the mesh manifold. And to adjust the flow, I have this flow control. So you yeah, just have to find the balance. Not too much water and not too little water. So the sparge is just to make sure there's nice level of water over the malt bed. This is today's hops, Citra, Galaxy, and Mosaic. And for bitter hops, I have Magnum. The water chemistry is extremely important in this beer style. You have to have at least two times as much of this calcium chloride than of this calcium sulfate. Uh, in this particular batch, I had the ratio of 2.71 in favor of uh, the calcium chloride. This is to get that right mouthfeel and that nice juiciness of the beer. The rest of the water chemistry in the beer depends on your brewing water. The amounts that I used in this recipe is based on my soft Norwegian drinking water. We are up to boil and have been boiling for about half an hour. I just added the bittering hops, the 40 grams of Magnum. And now it's time to weigh up the rest of the hops. I have my recipe here in Brewfather app and here I can see what hops to measure up 
So I'll have my phone here. So now it's the 10 minutes hops. 15 grams of Citra, 15 grams of Mosaic and 15 grams of Galaxy. Citra. I leave the name tag on the bag. That was Citra, now it's Mosaic, 15 grams. And then there's Galaxy. So there we have our 10 minutes addition. On uh, 10 minutes I'm also having uh, half a kilo of lactose in uh, my uh, boil. So I weigh that up. The Braumeister wants uh, attention, that means uh, 10 minutes is left of the boil. And there's our hops. And now I'll pour in this lactose powder. I don't uh, throw everything in at once because I'm uh, a little bit worried it will just stick to, uh, in the bottom and uh, heating elements will get burned. And here's our hop stand hops. And when it comes to the um, dry hops, I have these vacuum bags in my drawer here and I use them for my dry hops day three and day seven. So what I do, I am um, the first bag in this uh, bowl and I weigh up inside the vacuum bag. I uh, name the bag so I know in the freezer what which bag to pick. I P A Day seven. Okay, so day three is 65 grams each of mosaic and citra. And now it's time for day seven. 100 grams of citra, then I'll just take the whole bag. One hundred grams of mosaic. 85 grams of Galaxy. So there we have them, day three and day seven. Vacuumed up and I'll put them in the freezer. Now we are at the end of boil, so I will chill down the wort to 74 degrees C and then add the hop stand hops. Yes, then we're at about 75, 74 degrees. I turn on the pumps on the Braumeister to get a good circulation for the hop stand hops. So in they go. So on with the lid and I'll Tell brew folder app that we have finished cooling down to 74 degrees and I'll uh, continue. So brew folder will keep track of the time of my hop stand. Our hop stand is finished so now I will um, cool down the wort till 19 degrees C. Now the wort has been chilled to 19 degrees C and I've hooked up my pump, I star sand my pump and now I'm ready to transfer the wort to my fermenter. And now the wort gets pumped into my fermenter. While the wort transfers to the fermenter, I, um, I throw in one of these tilts to read temperature and gravity during fermentation. That's it, that's the wort. And I can see that my estimated 52 liters of wort to transfer is exactly 52 liters of wort. And now it's time to aerate the wort. Two minutes of this. And 
then there's the yeast. I'm using four packs of this, uh, I don't know how to say uh, the company name in uh, English, but in origin we would say Lalleman. Lalleman? I have no idea. I'm using this Lalleman American East Coast Ale Yeast. Normally I would use fresh yeast and make a starter, but um, I was curious about this yeast, so I'm using this. I would also normally rehydrate the dry yeast, but I forgot to do that today, so I'm pitching the yeast dry in the wort. The producer says that you can just pitch the yeast uh, sprinkle on top, right in your wort, but there's a lot of um, discussions on this topic. It'll dip in my star sand solution. Whoa. Okay, we need scissors. Smells like bread yeast. Hope it's not. <laughs> and uh, two and three. And in with the fourth and last. There it is. Ready to get wet and start doing its job. Then there's on with the lid. It's all set. I have a blow off tube into a little bit of star sand solution. So if there's a lot of uh, activity from the yeast, it will just go in my uh, star sand solution there. Here I have my temperature probe from my ink bird and I've insulated it with a little sponge. <laughs> so see you in three days when there's our first dry hop. Before the brew day is finished, there's one more thing to do, and that's our gravity reading. The color and haze looks absolutely great. Our target today was uh, 1067, and the gravity is it's, uh, somewhere between 1066 and 1067, so I think that's, uh, that's okay. <laughs> My tilt, however, says it's 1069. Okay, so that's it for brulee. Now I have to clean, but I won't bother you with that. Oh, by the way, everything went just fine today. There was no errors. Everything went smooth. It was perfect brulee. Kegging day is finally here. The beer has been fermenting for 14 days and then it's been cold crashing for two or three days. So here I have prepared my three kegs and here I also have my CO2 tank. Because the beer is so hoppy, I need to perform a closed transfer of the beer. And before I can start transferring, I need to make sure my kegs are totally free from air. And how do we do that? Well, of course, we need to have CO2 in them instead of air. But you can't just fill CO2 in the kegs. We need water, or in this case, star sand. So now I will fill my kegs with star sand and then I will push the star sand out with CO2. Then we can be pretty sure that the kegs are free from air. Okay, this keg is now filled with water and star sand totally full and uh, I have now pushed on my CO2 bollock and I will transfer the star sand from keg number one to keg number two. This way I will know when the, this keg is empty that there's just CO2 in the keg. And then I will just do the same thing from this keg to that keg and then all the three kegs are filled with just CO2. And then we can start the transfer. Okay, then this keg is full. And do the same thing with the last keg. Then moving on to the fermenter, 
I have taken off the blow off and before I started cold crash, I just uh, turned around the faucet. And now I will push some CO2 in the fermenter to make sure that there's pressure in the fermenter. So that when I open up for the beer to flow out, I will know that the beer flows out and not air gets sucked in. Okay, the first beer I'll just pour in a little glass. So most of the yeast and hop residues come out here at first. First look at the color and the haze. Oh, hot burn. Mm. I'm re releasing the pressure from the keg and I will switch. So now we can see that the beer gets transferred to the keg. It uh, takes a bit of time when you're kegging like this, but it's well worth it because you're guaranteed not to get uh, oxidized beer. And this is what my sample looks like. It's a bit uh, cold still, so I'll wait a bit to till I can measure properly. First keg is almost full. It's almost on 17 liters out of 19 liters. First keg goes quite fast to fill up. It's only been one song on Spotify because there's more weight from the beer in the fermenter. So it just gets uh, pushed out more quickly. But the last two kegs will take a bit longer. I can see on the condensation on the outside of the keg where the beer is and I can also feel the cold beer with my finger. And I'll stop when it gets uh, up to the rubber part of the keg. Now it says 18.5 liters. No, I mean kilos. Yeah, I'll just stop there. 18.9. Then I just take this off, bring on the next keg. So that was it from kegging day. I'll do the last keg and then it's the tasting. And then the beer is finished. Okay, I'll let you in on a little secret. The lactose is not necessary. You don't need the lactose in this beer to make this nice haziness. I have brewed the beer both with and without lactose and it really doesn't matter. So you can skip it. So I think I have uh, got the looks of the beer right. It is supposed to be this amount of haze. You're not supposed to see through it at all. And this is what defines that uh, East Coast style IPA. And uh, it looks like this, not just from the first few beers that you pour from your keg. The whole keg uh, will look like this. And as you can see, I have uh, canned my beer. I used my uh, October can seamer for that. Okay, now let's pick up the aromas. It's uh, tropical, no doubt about that. Okay, let's taste. Let's taste it. Mm. <laughs> it's really good, if that's allowed to say. <laughs> and that mouth feel, that texture, that smooth, almost creamy-like, texture it's just amazing and you can taste that nice tropical citrusy flavor it is just super nice so if you want to brew this beer yourself you can skip the lactose that was not uh, necessary otherwise try my recipe and it will be like this and you will be satisfied but remember you have to do oxygen-free transfer from uh, 
fermenting vessel to your keg and you should not bottle this beer if you bottle it it has to be from keg so that's it from this episode of the next batch now i will enjoy my beer and have a nice day skull